Those of you who have been watching my videos for any period of time probably already know that the Sony 16 to 55 f 2.8G is one of the best, if not the best, all around do everything lens that is available for Sony APS-C E-mount. Now, in my quest to find a cheaper alternative, because that is the only real problem with this lens, it's very expensive, I decided to try out a Tamron. Now, this is a Tamron uh, 17 to 28 millimeter constant f 2.8. It is a full frame lens, but you can obviously use it for your APS-C censored cameras. Now, I've tried out the 28 to 75 millimeter from Tamron. It is very sharp, a great lens, and I'm expecting more of the same. This lens is, well, there's a sticker on it. Uh, 899 is the current retail price, so $900, still pretty pricey. Uh, but you can find these used and you can find these on sale all the time for significantly less. I picked up mine for, I believe, $600. It's a, a pretty decent deal when you compare it to spending $1,200 on the Sony 16-55. to So let's take a closer look at both of these lenses side-by-side side, and then we'll jump into the side-by-side -side image comparison. If you've handled the Tamron 28 to 75, the 17 to 28 millimeter is going to feel very familiar. It's a slightly more compact lens, but it feels just as nicely built. I wouldn't say it's the most premium feeling lens in the world, but it feels more than adequate. Construction on this lens, it's mostly plastic, rubber, and some glass. So it is a lightweight lens, but it does not feel cheap, and that is important. At the very back of the lens, you get a metal lens mount, electronic connections, because this lens does so support autofocus. There is a very nice rubber gasket around the mount for weather sealing. As you move forward, you can see some lens detail, Tamron logo on the very top. It is designed in Japan, however, it is made in Vietnam. The first ring is actually the focus ring on this lens. It is very smooth, very lightweight, easy to turn. It is not mechanical. In front of the focus ring is the zoom control. So you can go from 17 millimeters, which is nice and wide, all the way into 28 millimeters which on an APS-C camera I'd say is a good street photography focal length. The zoom ring itself is nice to turn. It does have a little bit more resistance than the focus wheel which is good. It does feel ever so slightly cheap not necessarily because of the way that it rotates but because of the sound that it makes. Take a listen to this. Now moving forward, the front lens element is a decent size. You can see as you rotate the zoom ring, it does move in and out ever so slightly, about a centimeter of movement from one end to the other. Beyond that, the front of the lens does not have any markings or writing on it, so it's nice and clean. Overall, the package is really well done. I'd say it is well built. Taking a look at both of these lenses side by side, you'll see that as far as size is concerned, they are almost identical. Now obviously the focal lengths are very different and as you zoom in on the Sony all the way into 55 millimeters, it does extend and become longer than the Tamron, which does not extend when you go to 28 millimeters. So those are the two lenses. Now let's see how they do in a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm gonna keep all of the Tamron 17 to 28 millimeter lens images on the left and the 16 to 55 Sony images on the right. So this is the first shot. This is done at f8 on both, so kind of a nighttime sunset landscape. Uh, let's punch into the center, and it looks like the 17 to 28 has a little bit more detail here in all these little branches, uh, but pretty close overall. It is just a touch sharper. It looks like a win here for the 17 to 28. This next shot is a portrait of my wife done at 28 or 30 millimeters or so. Uh, so we'll punch in. Eye autofocus works on both of these lenses. The Sony 16 to 55 is definitely sharper. The 17 to 28 is pretty good. It's pretty decently sharp. It's just a touch more soft. Uh, moving out to the bokeh, you'll see that it's also a little bit more creamy on the Sony versus the Tamron. Uh, not by much. I would say both of these shots are acceptable, uh, but there's just a touch more detail on the Sony. Let's move on to the next one. Uh, this one is also done at about 28 millimeters on both lenses. Another portrait at f2.8. And punching in, here you'll see a little bit more of a difference. So 
Take a look at the Sony shot. Um, the colors are obviously different. The Sony is just tack sharp here at 27 millimeters. Just eye focus is spot on. You can see all the details in the skin, the hair. If you look at the Tamron by comparison, it's still decently sharp, but it looks like someone went through and kind of smoothed this image over a little bit. So while uh, your model or wife might prefer the image on the left, Technically, the image on the right is better and sharper. Uh, the skin tones are also more natural. This is what you kind of see with your eye versus I actually like these skin tones on the left, but they're not as realistic. And then comparing bokeh in both shots, I would say it's exactly the same. No real difference there. This next shot is done at 28 millimeters as well versus 30 millimeters. I focused on this kind of house in the distance f4 on both same settings on the others uh, this is very close but if you look at the brickwork it looks like the tamron is a little bit sharper here not by a whole lot but it is noticeable i'd say that both images are pretty good a little bit punchier colors we're seeing from the tamron but i'd say uh, the detail is pretty equal on both lenses if you look at all these little small branches and even the trees behind here. Here is another shot of my wife. Uh, this is kind of a side profile uh, portrait done at f2.8 on both lenses. I tried to focus on the eyes and I got very very close. The Sony 16 to 55 looks just a touch better. The Tamron looks really good, but it's ever so slightly more soft. It is brighter, kind of a lighter skin tone, uh, but both lenses performing exceptionally well in these two shots. And bokeh again is a wash, very nice and creamy from both lenses, but I'd have to give this one to the Sony as well. This is a uh, past sunset kind of landscape uh, focused as far out as I can. F4 on both lenses. You see the ISOs coming up to 400. Taking a look at these, uh, this is done on the wide end. So 17 millimeters versus 16 millimeters. There's really not much to compare. Uh, let me see if I zoom in. This is, let's do two to one. So here's two to one magnification. And honestly, there is not much of a difference here. On the wide end between both lenses, it's a wash. Now I wanted to uh, see what happens with chromatic aberration. So here's a shot into sunlight. Um, you'll see also what happens with flare between these two lenses. So I'd say flare control on both lenses is actually pretty good. Uh, the Sony does a little bit nicer of a job because it's not as circular and kind of bluish purple here, um, but both doing pretty well. You'll see that this shot is a little bit misfocused on the 17 to 28, which is unfortunate because I wanted to compare chromatic aberration. So this one on the wide end is misfocused. Let's move on to the next one. This is done on the telephoto side. So 28 millimeters versus 30 millimeters. And again, you'll see the flaring. Uh, in this one, you'll see kind of green flaring right here from the Tamron, whereas the Sony has this really bright uh, hot spot in flaring. But anyway, chromatic aberration, let's take a look. Both lenses seem to do a pretty decent job. You'll see just a touch of it with the Tamron, but it's very, very well controlled. And I'd say that is it is actually a little bit better controlled than what you're getting with the Sony 16 to 55. I mean, I see a little bit more of that purple fringing here in these branches and leaves than I am with the Tamron lens. From the point of chromatic aberration, I'd hand it to the Tamron. I mean, look at the control here. Let me zoom in so that you guys can see what I'm looking at. But Take a look at that. Very pixelated, obviously, because it's three to one magnification, but look at the control and chromatic aberration here versus, uh, this is a very well controlled lens, but it is a little bit more apparent with the Sony. So taking a look at this, I'd say it's a nice win for the Tamron 17 to 28. 
The last shot that I wanted to compare is uh, just a shot of some bricks to see if we can see any sort of barrel distortion. So here is the 17 to 28, and here is the Sony. So you can see almost immediately that the 17 to 28 does have a bit of barrel distortion in the center of the frame. And you can see that the lines are kind of bowed across the bottom. They are also a little bit across the top. Uh, whereas with the 16 to 55, the camera body actually corrects for barrel distortion on that lens. So you get a nice flat image straight out of the camera. That is it for the side-by-side -side comparison shots. And I don't want to get too technical when it comes to comparing both of these lenses, but I do want to say that from a usefulness standpoint, as far as using this lens over the last couple of weeks, I've just found it's a little bit limiting. You get a nice wide 17 millimeters, which is great. And you have the ability to zoom in at 28 millimeters and do some decent street photography. But what's missing from this lens is the ability to zoom in that much more and get really nice portraits with that out of focus background. And that's what you get with the 16 to 55. So while it's decently sharp, the colors, the bouquet, everything is very on par or very similar to the performance that you're getting from the 16 to 55, it just falls a little bit short because it feels like half of a lens, especially when I've used the Sony 16 to 55 so frequently over the last year or so. So for Sony APS-C shooters, I would still recommend either getting the Sony 16 to 55 or waiting for something else. And the reason I say waiting for something else is many of you have already mentioned in comments in my previous videos, Tamron is releasing or is expected to release a 17 to 70 millimeter constant f2.8, which would be amazing. It would cover the same focal range as the Sony 16 to 55 plus a little bit more on the telephoto side. And if the pricing rumors are correct, it should also be quite affordable. I mean, the $700 range or so, $800, I'm hoping. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that release, but for the time being, the 17 to 28 millimeters, while it is a great lens, I think, for full frame Sony shooters, it is just not ideal as an all around kit lens replacement on your APS-C censored camera. And when you consider the price too, I mean, if you pick up one of these, let's say you spend $600 on one of these, it's not gonna give you that coverage or the ability to shoot super wide and then get nice uh, zoomed in portraits. So you're gonna have to get something else in addition to this to do portraits. So you either buy the Tamron 17 to 28 plus the Tamron 28 to 75, at which point you're carrying around two lenses and you're better off getting just one that does both. So that is my comparison uh, and mini review of the Tamron. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something. As always, leave your comments down below. Always curious to read those. Stay tuned for more and have a nice day. Bye-bye.